Okay, so welcome to some TCP IP concepts. I did this video so that we can drill down on TCP and some of its functionality. So first of all, TCP is Transmission Control Protocol. It's a connection-oriented protocol, and it provides a reliable unicast end-to-end -end bit stream over an unreliable internetwork. Again, the focus here is connection-oriented, meaning guaranteed delivery. Okay, moving on. So the concept of connection-oriented means before any data is transferred, TCP will establish some type of connection. One TCP entry is waiting for a connection, some type of server, and then the other TCP uh, entity will be a client. So essentially, we will request a connection, accept a connection, and then disconnect. That's one way of looking at this. So the byte stream is broken up into chunks, which are called segments. The receiver sends an acknowledgement for each approved segment. The TCP maintains a timer and if an acknowledgement is not received within the appropriate time, it will detect an error and then resend. TCP also has a checksum for headers and data, meaning segments with invalid checksums are, dis are discarded and then uh, resent. Each byte that is transmitted has a specific sequence number. So we may start with a sequence number, and then we will get a response in the form of a sequence number and an acknowledgement. Now, the first sequence number, let's call it X, will be the next acknowledgement number. So it will be X plus 1, and we'll generate a new sequence number. And then the new acknowledgement will be the middle sequence number y plus 1, and so forth. So each end of the data flow must be shut down independently, meaning half closed. If one end is done, it's sending a fin or finish segment. This means that no more data will be sent. So this involves four steps. Y sends a fin, or X sends a fin to Y. Y will acknowledge the fin. At this time, Y can still send data to X. That's called actively closed. Passively closed, however, Y sends a fin to X. X acknowledges the fin. So different types of TCP states is closed, meaning no connection or active or pending. Listening, the server is awaiting for an incoming call. Sync receive, that's a connection request has arrived and it's waiting for an acknowledgement. Sync sent, the client has started to open a connection. Establish, normal data transfer state. Fin wait one. Client has said it is finished. Fin wait 2. The server has agreed to be released. Time wait. That's the time for a pending packet. Closing is both sides having tried to close simultaneously. Close wait. The server has initiated a release. And lastly, the last ACK, which is waiting for pending packets. So TCP states in a normal connection lifetime. We've already talked about our sync, our sync act, and our acknowledgement. But here we have our listening, sync received, our establishment, our closed waiting, our last act, and so forth. Now we can actually see the flow of those states. So another overview of TCP IP. 
It is the protocol that was used for common language between all computers on the network. It is part of the TCP IP stack. Again, it's the most widely used stack. And TCP IP stack contains, if we're looking at uh, the reference model, we are looking at four distinct layers, application, transport, internet, and network. It's very similar to the OSI model, except in the OSI model, application is layers 7, 6, and 5. Transport is the same in both. Internet is the same as the network layer. And network here will consist of the physical and data link layers of the OSI. So what happened is that each layer, the application layer, the layer includes all the network services and client software, basically the application functionality. The transport layer, similar to the OSI model, it's responsible for getting data packaged to and from application and port numbers. Internet layer, this layer uses IP addresses to route packets to and from their appropriate destination networks. Lastly is the network layer, and this layer represents the physical network pathway and the network interface card. So let's look at the application layer. This is the front end to the lower layer protocols. This is a layer that we can touch and it's the closest to the user at the keyboard. Again, this is dealing with applications. Things like HTTP or HTTPS, FTP, SMTP, SMMP, SSH, IRC, Telnet, and other application-based protocols. So some of those call, uh, protocols like HTTP, it's used for web traffic. FTP is file transfer. SMTP is a simple mail transfer protocol. SMMP is simple error management protocol, and so forth. So the transport layer, again, it encapsulates data into segments. We can uh, do TCP or UDP at the transport layer. TCP is connection oriented. UDP is connection list oriented. So TCP does a three-way handshake. Again, it's very important that we understand three-way handshake. Computer A sends a sync packet. B responds with a sync ACK packet and then computer A replies with a ACK packet. So here is how our header looks like. We have so, uh, source and destination, sequence acknowledgements. This is all done at layer four. So other critical components for our TCP is our flags, our initial sequence number or ISN, our source and destination ports. And normally this is used by hackers that are looking for vulnerabilities. So flags, different flags, the specific six are sync, that's synchronization, ACK, acknowledgement, PSH, that's push flag, URG, which is urgent, RST is reset, and FIN is finish and each flag occupies one bit, either zero or one, off or on. So our sequence number is a 32-bit number. It tracks packets received. It enables re reassembly of larger packets. It is sent on the first and second of the TCP through a handshakes. And by guessing the ISN value, a hacker could then hijack a session and then gain access without ever actually logging in if they hijacked that session. Things like ports, uh, a port is not a logically, uh, it's not physical, it's a component of a TCP IP connection. It can be variable, though it's very logical in nature. It identifies the services that are running on common or well known ports. Example, HTTP uses port 80. It's a 16-bit number, so we have our choice of 65,000 ports to choose from. 
Each TCP packet has a source and destination port. We could uh, do filtering based off of blocking ports, meaning if we want to disable a specific service, we could block that port that's used by that service. For example, we could block port 80, and that would stop web traffic. Not encrypted web traffic, just regular web traffic. Some of the well-known ports are ports like the first 1024, so up to 1023, 0 through 123, those are well-known, and uh, you can always find well-known ports by Googling them, but let's talk over a few of them. Ports 20 and 21, that's FTP, and that's used for file transfer. Port 25 is for SMTP, and that's for email servers listen on this port for receiving email. Port 53 is DNS, and that's going to be our translation between a domain name and an IP address. Port 69, which is trivial file transfer protocol, and normally port 69 or trivial FTP is used for transferring configurations to and from a router. Port 80 is HTTP or basic web traffic. Port 110 is our POP3. It's used to retrieve mail. Port 119, that's our network news transfer protocol. That's very common for our news groups. Port 135, that is our remote procedures call or RPC, and this is critical for Microsoft Server Technology, Exchange, and Active Directory, and other Microsoft Server uh, services. Port 139 is NetBIOS. Again, it's used by Microsoft's NetBIOS session service. It's a way for it to do file and print sharing. Port 143, that's going to be our IMAP. Similar to POP3, but with more features. Okay, now that we talked about TCP, let's talk about UDP for a minute. So UDP is fast, but it's unreliable. It's best effort. Also operates its transport layer like TCP, but it does not need to verify whether the receiver is listening or not. It doesn't have to verify that you got it. It just it sends it and that's it. So here the internet layer, it's responsible for routing. So again, very similar to our other items. It uses logical addressing called IP addressing. Uh, it is connection list oriented. Best effort. Protocol that could use it could be like a ICMP or ping. But because we're looking at ICMP message protocols, we have to talk about kind of what it does, and that's basic network troubleshooting. And one of the last things we really need to do is understood, understand the types for ICMP, also known as ping. So type 0 is an echo reply, type 3 is a destination unreachable, Type 4 is a source quench. Type 5 is a redirect. Type 6 is alternate host address. Type 8 is an echo. Type 9 is a router advertisement, or RA. Type 10 is a router solicitation. So let's go ahead and verify that. In a Wireshark packet capture, we see that this is a type 8, and so we know that is a echo. And that's actually it for our TCP overview.